This audio presentation of the Advanced Course in Personal Magnetism by William Watker Atkinson is brought to you by AudioEnlightenment.com. Copyright 2016. All rights reserved. Forward. In my previous work, The Art and Science of Personal Magnetism, I give the principles and elementary rules for developing personal power and influence. In this work, the subject will be continued, although it would be a complete work in itself, as no doubt many will secure this volume before they know there is a previous work. Those who have read The Art and Science of Personal Magnetism will better understand these advanced lessons, because we have repeated very little of the matter contained in the former work. I will not go over old beaten path or indulge in abstruse terms, but will give in a condensed non-mystical style all I have been able to learn of this wonderful power from the latest and ablest teaching on the subject. As in my previous work, all technical terms have been avoided, so that even the layman may readily understand. Some time ago one of my students asked me why I had met with such remarkable success in my teachings, and my reply was that after many years of study, I had succeeded in working out a united system along purely scientific lines, which is practical and appeals to reason. In a short time the faculty of intuition is developed, and as one secret is unfolded the key to another is placed in the hands of the student. For years, and at great expense, I bought course after course of instruction. I studied everything I could get a hold of relating to the secret of personal magnetism and success. Many of these instructions were guaranteed to accomplish wonders, and I earnestly waded through their abstruse terminology hoping to find the key. I found that many others had pursued the same course that I had, and that the results were unsatisfactory. Then I concluded that something must be wrong. In time I realized that the private lessons, which were expensive, were got out of as a money-making proposition. They were not concerned with the effort to give students value received, to make the work concise and readily understand and apply, but merely to confuse. Naturally, this method of procedure could not attract success. The foundation upon which they built was wrong. In my search I found some grand truth. I gained a little from each one, and thus I have been able to put into a condensed and perfectly simple form all the secrets which I have disclosed and proved so that I am confident that the student who earnestly learns and applies these straightforward and practical methods will be able to win success. They have been worth thousands of dollars to others and will be, I know, to you. What I am giving to you in this volume has been personally tried and proved. From my long experience, I am certain that if you study the lessons and practice them, you can become magnetic and make good. If you have not met with the success you desire, if you have not been able to carry out your plans, just get busy and read my lessons carefully. Through your higher self you can come in contact with tremendous forces and you can master the secret of omnipotence of natural law. One thing I must impress upon you, and that is that you must always use your forces wisely. You must never attempt to use your power to further anything that is dishonest. If you should thus attempt to misuse the power you inquire, I can assure you with absolute certainty that you will draw under yourself penalties in exact proportion to the wrongs that you have done. Chapter 1 Everyone possesses a certain magnetism which eludes the photographer, which the painter cannot reproduce, which cannot be chiseled by the sculptor. Although it cannot be seen, nor really described, personal magnetism is a tremendous power. It is a very important force in life, and those who possess it will meet with the most happiness and attain the greatest success in life. Many poor boys and girls have envied the rich youth who does not have to go out in the world and earn a living, when all the time they may have in their possession a magic power which, if properly developed, will bring them greater honor and success than that of the rich man's money. The men or woman with a charming personality is wanted everywhere, while the millionaire cad will not be tolerated except to be made a joke of. The man with a magnetic personality with a very limited capital is far more likely to succeed in business than is the rich man who has an unreposing personality. There is a law back of all creation which even up accounts. No one is given all the advantages. There are many young men who have started in business without almost nothing in a financial way, but who possessed a strong, clear magnetic power which enabled them to secure credit. Jobbing houses, wholesale dealers, and business enterprises of all kind are willing to take a chance with a pleasing young man of promise. We meet persons who are well-groomed, persons who have agreeable manners and are attractive, persons who possess a great deal of magnetism, but we seldom meet one who possesses all these. In this work I shall show you how to cultivate all of them. When you have acquired all these qualities, you will possess a talisman which will open all doors to you. The person with pleasing manners is seldom refused any request. 
They have such an attractive way with them that you feel it is a pleasure to do something for them. You have all met such persons. I know a salesman who can sell almost anything. Here is a secret. He interests himself in you at once and makes you feel that he is doing you a special favor by letting you buy his goods. He is so attractive and his manners are so ingratiating that you admire the man. He brushes aside all formality, and in a short time after you meet him you exchange confidence so you had been lifelong friends. He is so different from other salesmen that you feel it would be a pleasure to do business with him. The chances are that he may sell you something that you do not want, but at the same time he will give you the impression that he would rather lose his right arm than to permit you to take anything you do not need. The promoter knows the value of personal magnetism and does everything in his power to develop that latent force in himself. The businessman is now beginning to realize its power and is looking for employees who have a winning personality, those who may become magnetic by little training. Few persons are proof against a persuasive influence. In every walk of life we are constantly swayed by the charm and magnetic personality of some whom we meet. Those who are the most fascinating achieve the greatest success. We are helped and strengthened by mere association with magnetic persons, those whose character is charming and attractive. They may seem to have the power to lift you upward. You feel broader and bigger in every direction. They make you feel possibilities you never dreamed of. The awakening you have a new power. You are inspired with a new ambition. They make you want to do things. The best that is that your nature is drawn out. You have new impulses and aspirations thrilling you. It has always been a moot question as to just what is the greatest blessing in life. We all have different ideas. Most persons think that the acquisition of money is all important. But it is my conviction that the greatest achievement we need hope for is to raise ourselves to our highest possibilities, to call out the hidden beauties of our nature, and to become attractive and helpful to humanity instead of repellent and unsympathetic. For the benefit of those who have not read my previous work, Personal Magnetism, I want to state that I have taken students who appeared to be totally lacking in magnetism, and in a short time have developed them into the most charming men and women. Personal magnetism is not a subtle force possessed only by a few, but it is a latent power which may be developed by everyone of fair intelligence. By persistent cultivation, one may possess attractive qualities. All that I received in the many courses of instruction which I studied, and much more, will be contained in my books, set forth in the simplest and most lucid language, so that there is no reason why you should not become agreeable and pleasing to everyone with whom you come in contact. Your love nature will be developed and your sympathy will be broader, and you will become kinder, gentler, and more interesting to your fellow beings. Any amount of time and money expended in the work of making yourself magnetic will be well spent and will pay well in advance. It would be difficult to estimate the number of persons who have voiced the following wish. If I could only attract friends, how I wish I could become more popular and magnetic. Those lonely, discouraged souls who, through lack of magnetism, are left out in the cold world, could readily acquire this priceless possession if they could but resolutely apply them. It would be well for young people, about to enter mercantile life, and also for those who have thus far failed of the success they had hoped for, to consider this opinion expressed by experienced and highly successful men. A pleasing personality is not only a valuable asset, but is almost indispensable to the unknown aspirant for favor. There are doubtless thousands of men and women in this and other cities who have turned away disappointed after making application for a position as a salesman, without having the slightest idea why they failed to get a chance to work. They have been competent to do the work they applied for, yet, because of born carelessness in dress or sloppiness of manner, they made a poor impression on the man who appraised them, and thus they lost the opportunity to show what they could do. If they had considered beforehand that strangers are bound to judge their capability by their appearance, they might have improved that appearance enough to have turned the scales in their favor. There are few persons who are born magnetic, but the power is usually acquired by cultivation. Those who do have it are students of human nature. Magnetism is acquired by studying magnetic people and imitating their ways. Magnetic people impart some of their power to those who associate with them. It is a law of nature that whatsoever you give out will return to you with interest. The magnetism you transfer others will return to you with added power. You will find that man that does not associate with women has no magnetism. Women usually have more magnetism than men. Man draws much of his magnetism from woman. It is through her influence that he becomes refined and interesting. Many coarse, stupid, uninteresting men have changed themselves in a short time after having become interested in some woman. 
A woman of strong magnetism can accomplish wonders with a man in a short time. By a strange irony of fate, man, after being taught by a woman, often turns and uses the power he has thus acquired to control her and compel her to do his bidding. He is able to do this because his training generally develops a stronger will. Every woman has her master. She is a willing captive to the right man, and when she is thus captivated, she is a wonderfully changed person. She loses much of her individuality, and what is her husband's will and desire becomes hers. This is all wrong. You should never subject your own individuality to another's. You should seek to preserve your individuality and to develop and improve yourself. If you admire someone for their attractive qualities, add those same qualities to your own, but retain your individuality. Many women after marriage so change themselves that they become a mere tool of their husband's will. Thus they become monotonous and tiresome to the husband whom they seek to please. Nor is this state of affairs entirely one-sided. Many a man loses his finer qualities when he falls under the domination of an inferior woman, and instead of developing along the lines of his higher nature, he permits himself to be influenced along the wrong lines. It is important that we each and all preserve our own higher instincts and develop strength and magnetism without seeking to subject another to our will.